Ryan Tierney from Lean Made Simple and our next panel discussion on day two of the Two Second Lean Summit is a really interesting one and it was hosted by Jonathan Tierney and it's all about does the customer really care about lean? It's a really interesting uh, topic, a really interesting discussion and the panellists were Claire Colvin, Brian McAreevy, Paul Valley, and Adam Spivey and you're really going to enjoy this panel discussion. I'll start at the, the end here with, with Adam, who actually is our distributor. And uh, Adam, can you maybe talk on does the customer care about lean and your, your thoughts around that? Um, yeah, we didn't care about lean at all when CT Matters first started doing it. We've been working with CT Matters for seven and a half years before you started your lean journey. So we'd seen you try lots of different angles to improve. We were glad you were doing that, but we really didn't care about lean. Um, over the next months and years, we saw that the quality of the products improved, customer service improved, lead signs reduced, and the price stayed the same. So we, we started to be interested then. Um, and then we came to visit you, obviously, to do the lean tours. We've seen a massive transformation over the years. Um, so, yeah, we weren't massively interested in the methodology at first, more the results. But as time's gone on, we've took more and more interest in the methodology. And in October 2021, when our company had become a bit toxic, that's when we started our lean journey based on the culture we'd seen at Seat and Matters. Yeah, I think it's very typical maybe that our customers don't see the, the benefits of lean, especially at, at the start. But if you persist, like Adam, we've now uh, made Adam a, a convert. Um, but Adam, if, if you maybe would elaborate further into your customers, do you think they care about lean? Yeah, so the end user, um, not so much the person who's actually using the chair, but these chairs are often funded by nursing homes, councils, NHS trusts, and we've now started inviting those people to come to us to do a lean tour. Um, and we're finding that we're getting very good results with that. It's building the relationship. They can see that we're striving for excellence and doing everything we can to improve the service and keep the cost down. Paul, do you want to... Maybe take it from there and, and talk about your experience about your customer. Um, I think it's almost more like a, a fashion, uh, yeah. colours and you know, things are more important. And uh, maybe your experience and your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think for us, probably most of you don't know who we are, but we're a direct-to-consumer retail brand. 95% of sales are online. We're in the kind of mid-market sales range, and our customers really care about color, style, and uh, and what does the price point fit, and can we get it delivered on time? So I don't think our customer cares about lean uh, per se, but they absolutely care fundamentally about the results of, of our lean processes and, and what that does for them in terms of the product they get and, and the service they feel during that process. Do you think you would be able to compete with, because you're obviously online, you're massive competitors uh how do you think lean helps you to compete with like are you competing with amazon or what are you how do you work there yeah that's a good question and, and that's probably to an extent why we started lean because we realized the great thing about an online uh, business is you can get into it quickly the the barriers to entry are low and you can grow a business but that's true for all of your competitors and we found as we were growing and, and getting into a stronger and stronger position our competitors were, were coming on faster than ever, and you've got Amazon, eBay, and, and multiple other huge retailers we're competing with day by day, and there's no possibility we could compete with those retailers without the, the lean processes and methodology within our business. So I, I do feel that that is something in, that lean can give a smaller, like an SME business, an advantage against these massive corporations, and it gives us tools to, to, to work with. Um, Brian, would you maybe explain a wee bit about your business because it's very different than, um, you know, manufacturing or... It uh, is, yeah. M most people scratch their head when we start talking about our business. So, uh, in simple terms, everybody here at some stage has been in a shopping mall and um, hopefully uh, you've paid for your kid to use a kiddie ride and if you haven't, then shame on you. <laughs> but... <laughs> Our, our, our business uh, is a couple of sectors, but 90% uh, of our revenue would come from leisure vending. So if you think of a children's kiddie ride in a shopping mall or a photo booth where you'd go to get an ID picture taken, 
Um, and we've been in business for 30 years and we operate across Ireland and the UK. And um, just whenever I was looking at your slides, actually, there at the start, um, whenever we were getting into lean, you know, when everybody asked that question, why, you, what, what happened, or we, uh, our business has always been financially strong and we, we've been blessed with that, but we were really struggling with culture and at times, John and I struggled with the real deep meaning in the business to try to drive it. And um, we were on a search for better and a stronger culture and we found Lean and thank God we did. Um, and, and we've been on a positive journey ever since for the past two and a half years. But um, the question of does our customer care is a fantastic question. And um, we have two customers, so we have the B2B and the B2C. So does the, does the children that are using our machines care that it's working, that it's clean, that it's on? Absolutely. Do they want to know all of the processes that go on in the background? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, but do our B2B customers care about lean? Um, so. One thing that I've learned is that every we're all extremely weird people. So everybody in this room is a really small minority. And um, we are wired very differently than most people. So uh, whenever you think about that, then you, you know, your concept of does the masses understand or care about this is probably no, they don't. So about, I don't know, maybe 12 months ago, we really decided, okay, we have to start educating the, our customers on what we're doing. And the channel for us to do that on is LinkedIn. And we still have a lot to do and we need to get a lot better, but we're, we're on that journey. And my, my role in the business, uh, I speak probably more to our customers than anyone else. And most people on LinkedIn don't say a lot. They're ghosts. They're there. They're looking at things. They're not commenting. They're not liking. And they're not doing anything. Um, and the amount of conversations that I've had with customers, and all of a sudden they've dropped lean in, uh, and they've asked a question, or what's this about, or what are you doing? So I believe the care. Um, the question is, are we producing content that's relevant to them? So if we can produce content that is relevant to them, I believe we'll have more engagement. Claire, uh, you have a slightly different take on this topic. Um, do you want to maybe share some of your thoughts on the customer and do they care and does it matter? Yeah, sure. Um, so I guess what, uh, where I'll start is uh, before I joined Brendan as part of Simple Scaling, I had spent 25 years in the role of people and culture. Uh, I noticed somebody said, was it uh, Tom or Michael? Somebody said something about the role of HR. Well, well that was kind of me, but uh, I guess I always thought I wasn't, I, I never had the language to describe uh, what it was that I was actually doing. So I always categorized myself as one of these people who's not really, not really HR. Um, but um, so uh, I, again, thinking of Lean from the employee perspective, uh, you know, a massive part of that part of my career was spelt, spent either attracting employees to want to come to join these companies uh, building the capability that existed within the business and then also helping leadership to create the right environment where their people could thrive. So um, to, to answer the question specifically about lean and how important lean is to employees as a customer of every leader in this room, um, my, my mind has been worrying, if I'm honest, over the last two days because it largely depends on how we define lean. And I'm going to go back to Tom's uh, er, er point earlier on, you know, uh, you know what, what is a lean maniac or what is a learn maniac, as you said, about the, uh, uh, you, um, you know, the, the, it should be described slightly differently. And, you know, for everybody in the room to kind of think, well, what does it mean if I'm a lean maniac? But what would it mean if I was a, a learning maniac? And what would the difference be? Because... 
you know, there's, there's not too few people will not be attracted to an organization that's all about lean when we define lean as improving people's lives and wanting to enrich the employee experience. Uh, I, I, I think, and again, you may correct me if I'm wrong, but I think if we define lean as in being very process focused, which was, was my um, interpretation of lean before I met the Tierneys up at Seating Matters, I didn't realize how much lean was so, like, uh, so focused on people development. Uh, then the answer may be slightly different uh, because some people are not all wired to look at process, look for continuing improvements in process, but absolutely he doesn't want to feel that they're working in an organization where they get to participate, they get to develop, they get to build their confidence, they get to be included in everything that's going on within the business, and that is lean. So all depends on how we define it. Uh, absolutely, and uh, Adam, I think you would say see the same. I know Adam's business better because we're, we're working with him, but by looking after your own employees, you're ultimately looking after the customer because you have happier employees, happier customers. They're getting served better. Um, uh, does anyone want to elaborate on that or any other point? That I think there's still largely a, a, a hangover from what lean was you know x years ago i think what paul has done has just flipped it all on its head and i think you know and even largely what you guys have been doing in seat matters and the thing that i love about what is it's so simple there's nothing complex anytime that i've spoke to ryan or I've spoke to paul and i think it was uh, paul had said once that smart people don't believe it's so simple and um, and that's the truth. But and it's so easily it's so easy to overcomplicate a message. And um, I, we still have people in our organisation that when they hear the word lean, um, they start to think of lots of different things. But when it's all boiled down, um, it's a very simplistic framework um, for developing people. And I think the more we communicate it in simple, non-complex language, the more engagement we're going to get across the board. But we have a complexity in us that we, at times, <laughs> want to overcomplicate things. Yeah, I think to, to echo some of that, we've sort of, like every lean company, it's, it's a roller coaster of, of going well and, and not going so well at times. And we found the source of, of failure for us has always been when we started to focus on the process and the outcomes rather than on the people. And that's, going back to Claire's point about the internal customer, as soon as we started going down the chain a little bit, it, it started to fall off. As long as we focus on growing our people, the, the success and energy and motivation and enjoyment r remains within the company and then everything else follows. Sorry, Adam. Mine's only a quick point anyway. I think it was Richard Branson, but I could be wrong, but he said, happy staff, happy customers. And if you do lean, then you will get happy staff. So that should translate to your customers. Just one point I wanted to add in as well was uh, around the whole concept uh, of training. And actually, this is something uh, we learned at our trip to Japan. And uh, again, this is one of the concepts of lean that I think speak to everybody. Um, but it was, the quote was, um, training is, uh, it's not a detour, sorry, it's not a detour, it's a shortcut. And there was one incredibly memorable moment uh, on that study tour where a gentleman that we were uh, on the tour with, he is, um, he's got a solar energy business over in New Zealand. He had a real moment uh, because we were taught whenever we went over to Japan that, um, the, um, you know, instead of, as a leader, you know, teaching somebody to do something, and if they don't get it, we tend to point the finger and we tend to look at the recipient of the information. Whereas uh, in Japan, it is continually encouraged for the leader to look at themselves and question, well, I haven't shared that information in a way that um, the person has understood. And his response was, how many people have I had harsh conversations with and let go out of my organization where actually the problem was with me? I wasn't training people 
enough or to the to the right level or breaking it down into simple terms where people could understand. So, um, yeah, it's it's it, it's the it's the basic concepts of lean are uh, incredibly powerful. Yeah, Claire, we also had a discussion, you know, with uh, with with your business. You were talking about people maybe building a company and wanting to exit. So your ultimate customer could be an investor in 10 years' time. Do you want to maybe expand on that? Because that totally changes the way you think about who your actual customer is. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, again, one of the things that's simple scaling. So our business is all centered around our ScaleX framework. So we've got a number of things that we operate. We do a 12-month ScaleX Accelerator program for business leaders uh, to take them right through the framework, do a deep dive into each principle, um, in addition to uh, other solutions. But um, whenever we're working with business leaders to, on the program, one of the very first things that we will uh, work with business leaders is to start to encourage them to think of their business 10 years out which in my view is one of the most challenging things that uh, we can do. And my understanding is that this is because we're, this is back to our cavemen days, whenever we were wired to keep ourselves safe, we didn't want to take a step out and risk being hunted down or captured or killed uh, by something that existed out there. So we wanted to feel safe and belong. Uh, but one thing that we always uh, lean on is the analogy with President Kennedy uh, he, he didn't put a man on the moon by setting small incremental targets. He set out a big vision, which was going to take a decade, uh, in, enough to excite and inspire people to want to do that as well. So uh, it's, it's a really interesting process to go through. But once people start to think about t their business 10 years out, they also start to think, well, do you know what? I might not be here in 10 years' time. So what does the business look like without me? And, you know, is it uh, potentially, uh, or, or am I going to get bought out of the company? Um, ultimately, whatever happens, whether you sell the company or whether you have to get investment in to buy you out, uh, ultimately, investors are going to be looking at your business to decide how much your business is worth and the value that exists within your business. And I guess, uh, in, in simple terms, the value is uh, EBITDA, which is a measurement of your uh, profits, um, multiply, uh, by, uh, plus the multiple um, of which, um, which your business is worth. And that multiple depends on a variety of external factors, largely which are outside of our control, like market conditions or potentially the sector that we work in. And again, a great example of that, of that is, uh, my, my understanding is that within hospitality, for example, the mul multiple might be around three, but if you go into a technology business, the multiple could be around eight. So there's wide variety of factors that are outside of our control and very much depends on where, where we're operating. But there's also largely uh, a lot of internal factors which will, um, uh, which the value is dependent on as well, and things like our IP, things like our brand, and our ability to scale. And there's been great conversations over the last couple of days when, uh, when whenever we're looking at Lean, we're looking at creating the processes uh, to enable business leaders to take their hands off. Uh, you know, the value will drop if the business is not scalable and the business isn't scalable whenever you ha don't have a clearly defined set of processes and systems that are whirring away underneath your business. And actually, I, I think you guys are a great example of that. And, you know, you've created Tierco, you've created multiple businesses which allow you to take your hands off seating matters. Because as we all saw yesterday on the tour, you know, you've got a, a lovely set of systems there which could operate day in, day out, whether you're there or not. Uh, and that's the sort of thing that will increase the value of your organization uh, whenever you're considering an exit. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it, it almost makes it easier because we know Lean is uh, a long-term thinking. So if we know that this is going to help us long-term, that uh, increase our value, and I think there's, there, there's no doubt about that. Um, time's up. I do want to ask me one question just for Mr. Umamura to expand on what he said about uh, you know, the customer might not care about TPS. 
サービス業の現場っていうのは最終的なお客さん。So, the 現場 for sales people or sales department is the ultimate customer, is your 現場。Let me explain. もうちょっとあの例えば、えー、今回の会社の場合の椅子の会社の場合のセールスの最終は病院ホスピタル患者さん患者さんがお客さんだね。In, the, in your case, in seating matters, your ultimate customer is the patients. Does it make sense to you? Yeah. But... Um, so, Mr. Umamura said earlier that the customer didn't care about TPS.、Uh, so, maybe expand on that. But then also, you said the ultimate gamba was with the customer. Yes, he did. He did say that it doesn't really matter to the customers that you are doing lean or not. それはやっぱりお客さんがやっておろうがやっていまいがお客さんには変わりじゃないあの選別はできないと思うんだよね僕はや,やってるからいいとかやってないとかダメだということはないお客さんに From customer's view or point, point of view if the, the manufacturers or whoever the company is supplying me a service it doesn't really matter if you are doing lean or not それはお客さんが要望することをいかに 100% 達成してくれるかくれないかの話になるね。Because customers can only care if you can deliver what they want. <笑>そレ,レクサスを作ってる会社としてはお客様に私たちが作ってる製造の工程を見てもらって実施。この工程で作った車だからいい車なんだってことを PR をしてるんですですからあほとんどの自動車会社が見せていない塗装を塗る重要機密がいっぱい詰まってる工程をご覧いただいてるんです Mr. Mezawa thinks it does matter Lean does matter that my com- or the company that provides me product Doing lean or not, because Lexus always d e a l with customers, always invite customers to their factory and do the tour. And normally, except Lexus, nobody shows their painting plant or assembly line. But Lexus does. Lexus even takes to the paint shop to the customers, explain this is why you want Lexus. That's how we explain. So it does matter.いカスタマー Majorly two elements. One is the purchase price, which is easy to compare. The second is perceived benefit. Lean is a perceived benefit, which has to be passed on. How do we pass on? How do we communicate? Does anybody want to answer that? <laughs> Or is that a rhetorical? Because、um, I think it is communicating and it's, 
any sales is communicating what the customer ultimately wants, and different customers will want different things. Some might be. Pardon? Yeah. We've approached it totally differently in that from the very beginning, we made lean videos to show the world, not just uh, people who are interested in lean, but all of our customers know that we do lean, and they love us for that. They, they are attracted, they're magne magnetized to it. So I think it's the ultimate sales tool. And how do you communicate it to your customer? Make videos and show the world, and everybody's going to say, wow, I want to do business with that company. That's cool. Brilliant. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.